Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Previously, I talked about side 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 triangle congruence postulate and side angle side uh, triangle congruence postulate. So, today we shall continue on this topic that is precisely uh, proving triangles congruent. As I suggested before, you can prove triangles to be congruent by, you know, the definition of a triangle. That is, if you can prove that two, two triangles have uh, all sides that are congruent and all the corresponding angles that are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. Because any triangle, or any polygon for that matter, is congruent uh, if and only if all the corresponding sides are congruent and all the corresponding angles are congruent. That's the definition of congruent polygons or congruent triangles. You must uh, uh, know. And uh, in that uh, line of reasoning, we had talked about the two postulates that you see before you over here. That is side, side, side congruence postulate and the side angle side congruence postulate. Because it's kind of cumbersome to prove triangles congruent by definition of congruent triangles, proving all the uh, corresponding sides and proving all the corresponding angles to be congruent. We found some easier ways of trying or different ways of trying to prove uh, triangles to be congruent. And these were the two um, uh, postulates we talked about before. So if you recall, the side, side, side congruence postulate stated that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Certainly this is easier than proving triangles congruent by definition of congruency because you don't have to worry about the angles. This postulate states that if all the three sides are congruent, then the triangles have to be congruent. And then we talked about the side angle side. Now it says, what about if you know two sides are congruent and if the included angle is congruent? Well, in that case too, then the triangles will be congruent. That is, if two sides and the included angle, and we talked about what that meant, the included angle meaning the angle that's between or uh, included between uh, these two sides. So if two sides and the included angle of a triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle like over here, then the triangles are congruent. To this, we shall add two, ad two additional ways of proving triangles congruent, and this is angle side angle congruence and angle angle side congruence. So first, I shall talk about these, and then we shall proceed with some examples thereafter, inshallah. And here they are. So this is the angle side angle congruence postulate, and the last one is actually a theorem, and that is angle angle side congruence theorem. Now, if I remember going back to my high school days and getting confusing to try to remember all, all of these because, you know, which combination of angles and sides can you use to prove triangles congruent? So we have like, you know, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, right? So I've learned that one easy way to remember these is, is, uh, is to understand that you can have any combination of sides and angles uh, you know, like, so we have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. So these are basically the four ways that we're going to learn to prove uh, uh, triangles congruent. And we'll have some additional ways for uh, special circumstances, such as right triangles. But these are the four ways that we proved triangles to be congruent. Um, now, uh, e the easiest way to remember this is that you can have any three-letter combinations uh, um, uh, except that, you know, you can't spell, you know, a bad word. So, uh, you can pick, you know, uh, any S and any A's except, you know, you can't spell any bad words, you know. Uh, so, it's side, 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 you know, the bad words meaning like, you know, A, S, N, N, you know what I mean, like, you know, and a donkey or something like that. So, uh, you can't spell any bad words. So, side, side, side is okay. Side, side, angle, side is okay. Angle, side, angle is okay. Angle, angle, side is okay. And uh, you can't have angle, side, you know, side. You can't have it. That's, hold on, that's stuff for Allah. So you can't have angle, side, side. And either frontwards or backwards. So, it's, it's, so you can't have angle, side, side. God forbid. Uh, and you can't also have, you know, uh, uh, backwards. So you have side, uh, side, and that's that's also haram. This like spells you know, bad words. So we can't we can't have any 
spelling bad you know how imagine that you're proving triangles by using bad words or stuff laws in so 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 it's easy to remember then that th these are basic the four ways you can come up with any uh, uh, three letter combinations uh, that uh, uh, like this and uh, you'll be okay so you don't have to like you mem memorize it and like okay which one is which one is not it, just you just remember that little trick one thing you can't have though is you can't have angle 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 so you have side 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 uh, side uh, angle side and angle side angle 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 side N no spelling of bad words but you can't have you can't prove triangles to be congruent using angle 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 because uh, the reason is because you can have similar triangles with all congruent uh, angles and obviously they're not congruent triangles so it's not sufficient that the triangles have congruent uh, angles yeah this, this has to be uh, you, you notice all of these have uh, at least one side included in, in, the, in the three letters so uh, you can't have just angles because you can have similar triangles that have all congruent angles and the triangles obviously are not the same size so that's how I remember uh, these so there are only four of them and, and if you can get the right alphabet side 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 angle side angle side angle 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 side those are the four ways we use a side 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 angle side and kind of reverse of this is kind of like angle side angle and then angle angle side and of course there's no angle side blank if you know what I mean or um, side side blank if you know what I mean so you can't have any backwards uh, or forwards bad spelling words you know not nice so anyway so that's how you can remember these postulates pretty easy enough I think so let's talk about uh, postulates and the la last one being a theorem uh, so let's talk about these first and then inshallah we'll do some examples so angle side angle congruent postulate states that following if two angles and the included side that makes sense if two angles right and the included side the side in between see angle the included side angle side angle so if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and included side of a second uh, in, in, in included side of a second triangle then the triangles are congruent so you have two angles and an included side and here you have two angles and the included size so if you have two angles and the included size of one triangle is kind are congruent to two angles and the included size of the second triangle then the triangles are congruent that's easy enough to appreciate I think now when you uh, when you're writing the congruence statement like that you really have to be careful because if you start with C here you have to go to the corresponding angle on the other triangle so if you say C triangle C A B so triangle CAB so you have to go start from C and go towards A then you have to find the corresponding angle in the other triangle in this case it would be E it would not be F right so it would be E and going towards this way so triangle CAB would be congruent to triangle uh, EDF or as I have written here triangle ABC triangle A going towards B from here towards the double that's a uh, tick mark A here is going to be ABC is going to be congruent to triangle D F E from going from D to the double tick mark angle over here uh, so um, D so I have written actually ACB or as I've written ACB is congruent to DEF here ACB is going to be congruent to DEF so whichever way you write the congruent statement you just have to make sure you start with the corresponding angles and go in the right direction so trace out the triangle uh, from starting from the correct same con corresponding angles and uh, go, going in the right direction to the corresponding side so this is angle side angle if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle then the triangles are congruent all right so the last one here is a theorem because you'll see it's be easy to prove and this is the angle angle side congruence theorem so angle angle side congruence theorem so if two angles so if two angles here we have two angles and the non-included side so in this case the only difference is this non bit here okay if two angles so we have two angles over here all right so if two angles and the and and the side angle angle side and the non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles uh, and the non-included side of a second triangle then the triangles are congruent so two angles here we have two angles let's let's do this so if you have two angles 
we, we got the two and the non-included side so see with these two angles angle C and D this would be the included side and this is the non-included side said so side that's not in between these two angles so if you have two angles and the non-included side of one triangle is congruent to two angles and the non-included side of a second triangle then the triangles are congruent so it's angle angle side angle angle side all right so that's pretty easy enough i believe now again you have to be very careful how you write the congruent statement that is you have to start at the right uh, at the proper angle uh, uh, the corresponding angle of each triangle and go in the right direction so you have c b a so angle c and i went towards b and a so you start with the corresponding angle to c is e and i go towards the other angle here and like this so it's going to be e f t so triangle c b a is going to be congruent to triangle e f d and that's it these are uh, these are the four ways we prove triangles to be congruent other than the definition of a triangle now this is a theorem right so it means we must be able to prove it well that's pretty easy enough to prove i hope you you can see it can you see it hmm, maybe maybe not maybe I, i'm not for sure if i saw it the first time i, I uh, did this well if these two try see if they have this triangle and if if this angle uh, are, are these two angles are congruent then this third angle is congruent so because of third angle theorem because the third angle theorem says if two angles of a triangle are, are congruent uh, the two angles of a second triangle then the third angles are congruent so that's a third angle theorem and once you have the third angle theorem see here we have angle side angle right there don't we here we have angle side angle so we can use this postulate to prove this theorem so angle side angle so because of the third angle theorem we can get the third angle and from there we can use angle side angle to prove this so this posture can be used to prove this particular last theorem so those are the four ways we prove triangles to be congruent here so let me just reiterate it's side 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 angle side and angle side angle and then angle angle side and that's it and next time inshallah we shall learn about special cases such as right triangle and we shall learn hypotenuse leg which is just a, a special case of one of these is it relates to right triangle and that will be it then those are all the ways basically you prove triangles to be congruent and that's the gist and the majority of this chapter okay so now we shall proceed with doing some examples inshallah Okay, so here's our first uh, example here. I, I made a typo here, so I corrected my typo. I apologize for the messiness here. But let's go with this, uh, uh, this question. So, given segment QS bisects angle PQR. So, segment QS, that's from here to here. QS, right there. That segment apparently bisects angle PQR. P Q R. So that's P. That's Q. That's R. So that segment bisects that angle. That means these two angles have to be congruent. That's what say, a, a, angle bisector means. So if that segment bisects that angle, it cuts that angle into two equal equal halves. You know, uh, that's by definition of angle bisector. So by angle that bisector definition, we get that. And that's where I made the typo. Uh, the t the uh, they should say angle. Q P S Q. That's P S Q. That angle. So angle P S Q. That's this angle. Is congruent to angle R S Q. R S Q. So that's congruent to that angle. And then we are asked to prove that triangle P Q S. That's P Q S. That's this triangle over here. Is congruent to triangle R Q S. Is congruent to that triangle over there. Okay, so that's what we have to ask to prove. So we're supposed to prove those two triangles congruent. Now, how do we do this? Now, as you know now, there's only four ways. Side, side, side. Side, angle, side. Angle, side, angle. And angle, angle, side. Well, we have angle, angle. Do we have any... So we need one side at least, right? I told you, remember, so there's, a, there's at, least, at least one side that we need for all of these, Okay. So we have to somehow get one side to be congruent to in between these two triangles because if you just have angles, you have angle, 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 that's you can't prove triangles congruent using angle, angle, angle because similar triangles also have three congruent angles. Okay, so we need one side. Um, I don't know. I don't see it. Do you see it? 
well I do see it actually I was just kidding so so here's a, this side of course is common to both of the triangle by reflexive properties see that that side is common to both triangles so we have then we have angle side angle ta-da that's one way right because it doesn't spell a bad word so by angle side angle we can easily prove these uh, two to be congruent so uh, let me try to do this as a, a two column proof for you because it, it does uh, make a different statements okay and then here are my reasons and the first thing is uh, segment QS bisects okay angle PQR and that was given information so that's cool because of that given information I can conclude that angle PQS that's this angle right here do, 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 that angle is congruent to angle RQS RQS you better make sure you're following me make I don't make a mistake then you have to comment in the video that I made a mistake or something like that right so then we'll give you like 100 extra credit points so angle PQS is congruent to angle RQS so we got that by this is from definition of angle bisector okay so we have that that's pretty easy peasy and then we are given the other bit of information so let's write that down number three given this is given angle PSQ is congruent to angle RSQ and that's because of given information and from this we can conclude uh, uh, no that's that's it that's just given information and then we write our, our great insight and that was of the reflexive property here so as you can see reflexive property comes in handy quite a bit doesn't it it's like simple thing that you thought was pretty self-evident and um, it's actually very helpful uh, so I'm going to say um, SQ here uh, segment SQ is congruent to itself darn it uh, because of of uh, reflexive uh, property so reflexive property of congruent segments all right so we got that easy peasy so then we have uh, that's it we're done right because then we can say the triangles are congruent so triangle PQS is congruent to triangle RS uh, RQS RQS and that is because of angle side angle so you can just say angle side angle congruence so that's pretty that's pretty cool so angle side angle uh, triangle congruence okay so let me put it this way an angle side angle triangle congruence you can just say angle side angle so I'm just trying to not take shortcuts here until we are pretty used to so that's it we're done with this particular proof I thought that was pretty fun and easy let's see what we have next okay another triangle question surprise okay now so let's see what we have here so let's go with the given information so give an angle DAC okay one well, there's a lot of angles here angle DAC so we have to be careful angle DAC that this angle here is congruent to angle BEC so that's BEC here so this angle I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use maybe different color to kind of oopsie daisy uh, a different color to make it uh, uh, clear to us so DAC here this angle is congruent to BEC here this angle here so we got that angle to be congruent okay and then we have segment DC is congruent to BC so that's DC that segment okay so this segment here is congruent to BC over here you have to be careful here of how you interpret these tick marks okay because this is saying these se this segment and this segment are congruent it's not saying the whole segment AC okay so just be careful how you interpret these if you have tick marks like this marked in a diagram you have to understand that means from B to C and from D to C are congruent not not A to C or E to C okay so this is correctly marked so we know that that angle and now we are asked to prove let's see what we are asked to prove we are asked to prove triangle A C D that this big triangle okay is congruent to A uh, uh, to E C B E C to this triangle over here whoa that's kind of like what's uh, what's going on over here right now this could be tricky the first time you see something like this all right so we're asked to prove that this triangle over here is congruent to this triangle over here okay 
Now you have to kind of look at it carefully so you understand this. Now what I can do is, okay, look, you can redraw this diagram, okay? So I can redraw this diagram and separate out the triangles, okay? So I can separate out the triangles over here like this. So this triangle I've drawn over here, this is like E, B, C over here. And this triangle is A, D, C over here. So I separated out the triangle. If it's confusing, you can like separate them out like this. Now, what do we know about this triangle? Well, we're told that this angle over here, hanging out over here, is congruent to this angle over here, hanging out over here. Okay? And then we're told BC. Well, where is BC? Uh, it's like somewhere over here, right? Okay, it's not in this diagram. But BC um, is this side over here. See, that's BC right here. BC is congruent to DC, which is this side over here. Ooh. That's interesting. So now look, so we have this angle over here is congruent to this angle over here. And we're supposed to prove these two triangles to be congruent, okay? Now what? Well, boy, boy we're probably going to prove these to be congruent. So sometimes it, it becomes easier after a while when, to visualize triangles because there are a lot of triangles in here. It looks confusing. Lines are going every which way. But here we're trying to prove this triangle to be congruent to this triangle over here. So if you want to separate them out like this, sometimes it helps. So, But then you have to make sure that you get these angles correct. So that angle corresponds to this angle, and this angle corresponds to this angle in the new diagram. And BC is this over here, and DC is over here. But, okay, so we have, what do we have at our disposal? Okay, side, 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 angle, side, angle, uh, uh, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. That's what we got, right? Well, I need some more information because right now I only have angle and side. But we need something, right? We need one more thing. So what do we need? Do we know any other sides that are common to each other? Maybe something is common, right? <sighs> Hmm, what, wait, but wait, but look at this though, this angle C is common to both triangles, that's angle C, that's over here, and angle C over here is right there, aha, now I got another angle, so can I use that, now what do we have here, we have angle, angle, and side, aha, is that halal, is that, is that good, it's not halal, it's angle, Okay, that doesn't spell a bad word. Angle, angle, side. And here we have angle, angle, and side. Ta-da! Yes, that we got it. So we can actually prove this using angle, angle, side. Alhamdulillah, which doesn't spell any bad word. Okay, so now uh, did you want me to do this as a, as a, pair, uh, as a book two column proof? Um, maybe we should. Here we go. Just be patient and, you know. Well, you're just watching this anyway. I have to make it and edit this, this thing, okay? So just hang tight. Statements and reasons. All right, so here we go. So angle DAC is congruent to angle BEC. All right, so so that's given information, G-I-V-E-N. So that's, that's that, that purple thing, okay? And then we were told that number two, uh, you can write this as a, as a single statement, but whatever so we wrote this as two separate statement that's cool that's also given information so that's it so that's all that we were given and then we had this brilliant insight of us and that's that's like our brilliant insight right that's like, ooh, like this doo, 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 doo. that was our like light bulb moment right there uh, our light bulb moment was that angle C was congruent to itself and that is reflexive prop uh, reflexive property uh, reflexive property of congruent angles right so reflexive property of congruent angles and that's all really you gotta do really and then you're done and then you say the two triangles are congruent triangle ACD is congruent to triangle ECB darn it because of angle angle side ta-da right we're done QED so there we go so um, that's really it so uh, this is a tricky question if you don't see it, but you got to try to visualize triangles and try to get one of the four ways we've tried to prove triangles to be congruent. Okay, let's see what we got next. Okay, so this is a flow proof. Oh, thank goodness, because it's easier to write them down. Okay, that's cool. So this is a flow proof. So we're asked, uh, let's see, let's give an information. Let's just kind of walk through this, okay? 
given information. RQ is congruent to ST. So it's marked already as RQ. This segment here is congruent to this segment here, ST. So we got that. Oops, I did it again. So RQ is congruent to ST. So that's marked already. And then we're told RQ is also parallel to ST. That's also marked over here. Oh boy, now you, you thought you could forget all that stuff. No, 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 you guys still remember it. Now we are asked to prove that RUQ, RUQ, that this triangle is congruent to TUS, that this triangle. So we have to prove those two baby triangles to be congruent. Parallel lines. Oh my goodness sake. So, okay, so what are we going to do? Okay, let's just review. In case you forgot, you probably didn't forget the superstar student that you are. So here we go. So here's two parallel lines, and I'm going to draw a transversal. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, as you know, a boatload of things happen. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal like this, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So remember, if those were called the corresponding angles. That was the postulates. Everything else was a theorem. So corresponding angles are congruent. Then alternate interior angles are congruent. And then we have alternate exterior angles are congruent. And then we have alternate interior, alternate exterior. And then the consecutive interior angles. Those are the consecutive interior angles. They're not congruent, but they are supplementary. Ta-da! So we got that. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then we have a whole bunch of angle, angle congruencies. So, and that was precisely corresponding angles are congruent, alternate interior angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, and of course the consecutive interior angles were supplementary. Okay, so that was a review. So I'm guessing we're going to have to know and use that somewhere because, and you can imagine, uh, uh, more complicated questions will involve something like this because you can get a lot of angles to be congruent if you have two parallel lines. So, but I don't see any parallel lines, you say. Well, you have C parallel segments, right? And But they're not parallel lines. Well, you can get parallel lines that are parallel segments, right? Because segments have two points. And two points is all you need to make a line. Two points determine a line, right? So two points determine a unique line. So if you were to extrapolate or extend these segments into lines like this, uh, trying trying to do it, trying to do it, trying to do it. Nice job for you. Okay, and then you have a bunch of transversals. You have two transversals here, actually, crisscrossing. There's one over here. That's really all you need is one. All right. So um, if you have that, then this is going to be watch. This is alternate interior angles. That's alternate interior angles. If you use the other one, that's like alternate interior angles there. So. You have to be able to see that. You have to see parallel lines cut by transversal. Okay? Then these are alternate interior angles. That's alternate interior angles. Okay? So uh, you have to see these alternate interior angles. Okay? Now, I got to tell you one more thing here. All right? Now, these two, uh, um, these two triangles, um, you have these vertical angles. Okay? If you have the vertical angles and this one side, you're still not, you know, not done. You need another angle, right? But you have these vertical angles. You always have to see the vertical angles. See, that's what I'm trying to say. So those are congruent. You already, it's like a gift. Vertical angles are gifts. They're congruent. So those angles are congruent. And we just said these two angles are going to be congruent because they're alternate interior angles because of the parallel lines. Although, alternatively, you could have used this one and this one because there, those are also alternate interior angles. Is that sufficient for us? That's angle, angle and non-included side, angle, angle, side. Can we do that? Angle, angle, side. Is that okay? That's absolutely okay because that's not a bad word. So, so angle, angle, side. That's how we're going to prove these triangles to be congruent. So, though, so the given information, we have RQ... Uh, is congruent to ST, okay? So this, uh, 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 since so since RQ is, by, uh, uh, is given, okay, um, and you can say RQ is parallel to segment ST, okay, okay, which implies, okay, which implies that this angle, angle Q, is congruent to angle S because of alternate interior angles are congruent so if two lines are cut by transversal uh, then the alternate interior angles are congruent okay so so RQ is given and then R, which implies interior. and then angle RUQ 
Q that's is congruent to angle uh, T U S are because these uh, these are all vertical angles uh, all vertical angles are congruent okay so you can see this is a paragraph proof also a uh, vertical angle therefore the two triangles are congruent therefore triangle R U Q is congruent to triangle T U S uh, because of angle angle side triangle congruence that's going to be a theorem that was the last one uh, and we can uh, prove that remember that okay that's it uh, that was not so bad so I thought this is this was fun and uh, inshallah we, next time I will review this and do do more examples inshallah and, uh, with perhaps a bit more complicated one trickier ones a bit more beautiful one therefore until then as-salatu wa-salam wa-salam wa-alhamdulillah rabbil alameen as-salamu alaykum